peace and blessings everyone welcome back queen or set here i am recording this outside it's a gorgeous gorgeous fall day you know where i live it's either humid and hot or frosty and cold and that's it very rarely is it ever in between so it feels like actually an early spring day so this is the kind of weather I'm used to. Those of you who want to get colder, peace. Anyway, today I want to do a walkthrough of another Oracle deck. And many of you are familiar with this um, illustrator, artist, um, Arthur Rackham. And there's a Rackham Oracle that's available that, of course, I'm not going to purchase. But if you know of another source where I can get an Arthur Rackham Oracle deck, let me know. Leave your information down there, you know, in the, yeah, the comments section. Anyway, I've always had um, an interest in fairies, the fae, you know, um, I do have Gaelic ancestry, you know, it goes way, way back. And I've always felt a connection to the uh, we folk, I guess you could say. I don't know. I call them the we folk. And we're pretty much on good terms. So over the years, I've collected a couple of books. And this one happens to be one of my favorites. And you can get this actually rather cheap, or I should say inexpensively. Um, just search around and it's Lady Lady Cottingland's Book of Press Fairies and you know she keeps a diary of fairies that that she supposedly captured there's even a band on these few pages that say that these pages are protected um, banded together to protect the, the, the reader from um, any mishaps with the fairies, okay? And I was lucked out, I actually got this in the book. So the reason why I brought this out, number one, is that I actually have two copies. So pay attention, okay? Now, the deck I'm introducing you to, oh, can't talk. Must be this fresh outside air. The deck that I'm introducing to you is the Fairy Oracle by Arthur Rackham and Jamie Elford. Now, Jamie Elford is a creator of one of the decks that I am not thrilled with at all, but she did a good job with this deck. So course glasses this is a deck that's put out by uh, Los Scarabeo you know hard box put together well um, Victorian looking you know it has an aged look when you look closely at it I don't know if you can see that the trees you know the woodlands there unlike the other Oracle decks that I've showed you Recently, nothing on the inside except for pull string. And it says here, a magical place out of time. The fairy oracle is a Victorian age renaissance full of poetry, glamour, and mystery. It's a personal, intimate journey into the moonlit tales of the good folk. Of course, standard Los Scarabeo. The guidebook comes in several languages there. Okay, um, let's see how much information I have here in English. I have about 28, 29 pages in English. That's it, all right? Just that little bit right there out of all of that. But you know, when you have six languages in a book, they manage to get everything in. The guidebook has that same woodland look. Let's see what it says here. I don't speak Italian. Let's get here. Welcome to the Fairy Oracle. 
This 36 card divination tool explores the Victorian fairy realms and our connections with it. The themes in this deck express a wide variety of emotions and concepts known to all of humanity. Use this deck to inspire your world and to let the fairies of the old ways help to answer your questions. If you look closely at the images on the cards, you'll see hidden figures peering back at you, waiting to tell their stories. And it says here, it features the artwork of Arthur Rackham, who lived from 1867 to 1939. He was a fantasy painter whose illustrations graced the pages of children's books. Um, his earlier illustrations were done in pen and India ink, while his later images incorporated watercolors to create their dreamy effects. It took him many years to develop the style that would eventually make him famous. And it says his illustrations appeared by in books by J.M. Barry, Rudyard Kipling, and Lewis Carroll. Rackham's work was heavily influenced by his imagination and tales of the fairy folklore. Um, let me see. It goes on to say, many of his paintings were used to capture and illustrate the various fairy tales from around the world. Uh, fairy lore of the time period. So, of course, you know, this deck is focusing more on the Victorian era. And it says that, um, like the history of it going from the Romantics, the Victorians, the Edwardians, embraced the fairy folk tales publicly like it had never been done uh, previously. You know, European cultures really embraced it. And then these tales were reshared all around the world. Um, and then it says, with the start of the Industrial Revolution, the belief in fairies still living among the locals decreased. It was thought that with the changing countryside becoming less pastures and forests and more cities, fairy folk had nowhere to live and thrive. The people believed they were losing their local fairy folk as industry grew. By the 1900s, fairies and fairy tales were well loved, and people wanted to believe in their magic still occurring in the world around them. Sadly, most people believed they were historical and no longer around. Then, going back to the book here, Lady Cottingley's Press Fairy Book, when the Cottingley, Cottingley fairy photographs appeared in 1970, no. Not 1970. I'm sorry. I got disco on the brain. Appeared in 1917. The belief that fairies were still alive and around brought about a fairy revival. Despite being proven fake later, the appearance of the photographs kept the spirit of the fairy folk alive. One of the more famous writers of fairy lore from this time was actually Sir Arthur Conan Doyle who wrote articles about fairies' existence in connection with his participation in the spiritualist movement. He was not alone in this revival of fairy lore and beliefs. The celebration of having fairies around influenced more artists' work, and the appearance of these stories and illustrations became popular once again. Rackham was no exception to this, and his work is still with us to this day. Even today, fairies and their allure abound as we all want to be embraced by the good folk. And then we go on to the card meanings and we get right into it. So, let's take a look at the cards. 36 cards. This is what the back looks like. And I was going to say that that's Cherub, but um, I went through the deck rather quickly and you'll see this image again. But it's a baby. And if you look closely, the baby is being assisted by fairies. I don't know in what regard. I didn't look up the meaning, but uh, we'll take a closer look. So the cards are just numbered. There are no keywords. You just have to look at the imagery. So card number one. Can you see what's going on there? It looks like a baby and a fairy and a school of fish. And this may be an underwater I'm not sure. I need to put my deck in something. I am sitting outside, a la Amber of Lavender Moon. And I do not want my deck destroyed before I've even had a chance. 
Okay, and this gentleman here. Who might that be? Card number three. We have some sort of flight activity taking place here. Card number four. Someone's in the tree. Do you see those beneath the tree? Are they telling her to come down or they're saying we want to climb up too? Card number five. Oh. Mm. Number six. Wow, number seven, burden way down. Number eight. I do hope you can see this. I'm going to move over a little bit this way. Or maybe I should switch sides. I don't know. Because that's my window. And it's reflecting the trees that are that way. So let's try this side. Oh, that's better. Should I go back quickly to the first ones? Because, you know, I'm not editing this, so... Let's do it rather quickly, yeah? All right. So you can see them clearly. Number one. Two. Fine looking gentleman there. Card number three. wonder where they're off to. So we have card number nine. going rather quickly. Card number nine. Look at that. Look in the trees. Hmm. Hmm. Who is that? I don't know if it's male or female, but have they unfortunately been caught by the fairy? Let's just see. Number ten. Number 11, secrets shared beneath the roots of a tree. Number 12. Now in the guidebook, <clears throat> before I continue on, each card does have, I guess you could say, um, the name of the painting, right? So we just look at this again. Um, 
Let's say number eight. See that? And it says number eight is revolution. In every age, a revolution happens. For the Victorians, the rise of the Industrial Revolution heralded a time of fear and worry for the old ways. The construction of skyscrapers, of smokestacks, and of machines threatened to tear the very fabric of imagination away. Thankfully, the fears were only just that, for the good folk are still here. See that? I like that. I like that message. All right. Let's see what else we have. Oh, yes. So I was curious about the next card, card number nine. Oh, and it has a meaning as well. Let's go back to card number eight. So the meaning is, it always feels darkest before the new dawn. Revolution can be a scary moment. Embrace the change, but hold true to your ideals. Be wary of what comes. Rage against the dying of the light. Hold up your candle to the dark and light the way through the wilds. I like that message. Yes. Hmm. And card number nine. Ah. Enticement. A young man wearing a brim hat leans out towards a maiden crouched against a tree. She appears fearful, shying away from him. Two fairy maidens hold the young man's arms, attempting to sway him over to their desires. There's a subtle seduction at play here, and they have a meaning. If you receive this card, you are being encouraged to leave behind the familiar, moving on to a world of something more. What is drawing you to that new realm? Embrace the change, the chance to do something new. See, I think with this one, I would have to use the guidebook because looking at that, I mean, I suppose you could work with it intuitively if you knew the artwork. It's sort of like John Bauer. I'm going to talk about that tarot deck in a minute as well. If you're familiar with the artwork, then you can pretty much put together the stories. So we are on number 13. Let's see. Should I continue on with reading what's in the book? Number 13 is Danger. Okay, and number 14 is Enlightenment. And it says, Fair Helena stands in the reeds, the sun casting halos around her hair. She is the one who takes the time to think, to really understand what the nature of being human means. She desires the highest form of love and ends up rejecting anything that does not meet up to her expectations. As a result, she is alone, yet is surrounded by caring individuals. If you have drawn this card, you are being asked to think about where you are going. Look to the higher sources to guide your inner compass. Allow epiphanies to come. Realize the wisdom received and acknowledge its origin. Card number 15 is defense. Flights of fancy. Page. Oh. Rest. Finish what you are doing and step away for a bit. It's time to sleep, perchance to dream. Give yourself a break. Ooh. Rejection. A man wearing a top hat pauses along his morning walk. The fairies creep out from their hiding places, whispering memories to him. He holds up a hand. No more, he says, or he seems to say. He doesn't have the time or desire to hear their stories or their songs. 
He has grown up and is beyond their reach now. Rejection is a part of life. There are so many options in the world, you cannot say yes to all of them. Learning to distinguish what you want from the chatter of what you don't want is a meaningful skill to learn. This card reminds you to cultivate your resources, to say no to things you do not have the time for or no longer actually need. <laughs> I like that. Progress. Demise. Wow. Hmm. Watch your step. Fairies are falling down a hole. Fond farewell. Wow. It is late in the evening as two worlds collide for perhaps the last time. An elderly gentleman bids fond farewell to his fairy companions in a misty field. There is a sense that he is leaving this world and moving on to the next. And while he's never forgotten the good folk, he must say goodbye once more. Fond farewells are never easy. If you have drawn this card, you will be asked to let go of something. This is the only way you can clear yourself so you can move forward towards the next realm. Oh, that's kind of melancholy. Righteous. <laughs> Two fairies hover against springtime flowers. They preen their chest pulled out. Who are they presenting to? They seem to be self-indulging in the moment, not allowing any external presence to disturb their ritual. Being righteous is to understand the rules of society and know your place within. If you have drawn this card, you will be asked to put your best appearance forward. Be at your best and truly know your own greatness. I like this card. Ooh, and who are you? The Collector. Hmm. Choose wisely. Make sure this is something you desire. Oh, the light. Look at the baby and the kite. Hmm. He's not noticing the rose bush behind him. Oh boy, we have more babies in here. Number 25, reevaluation. This is the kite from the previous card, tattered now. And it keeps him from moving on his own. Two swans rush in to help remove the strings, freeing him from his imprisonment. There comes a time in your life when you need to reevaluate your choices in order to make better decisions. That time is now. Be aware of what is going on around you. Don't let yourself get caught up in too many things. Reevaluate your position and get help from those you trust when you get stuck. I like that. Balance. Walking on a tightrope. Supported. Can you see the owl in the tree? A single owl perches on a branch high above, watching them, protecting them as they make their way through the land. <laughs> Being supported by those you care about is a great feeling. I must say so far I am pleasantly surprised by this deck. This, this deck has surprised me. Shared wishes. Oh 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> a well-dressed gentleman bends down towards a young child. He holds a dandelion in one hand. His lips are puckered as he pushes air through the delicate flower, blowing the seeds off into the wind. Down below, the child counts on her fingers the number of wishes they desire to make. Will they come true? Only time will tell. It says here, wishing on dandelions has been around for a long time. It is said that when you pick one and blow, you can receive any wish your heart desires. When you do make a wish, share it with someone you care about. Let them in on what you desire. Perhaps they can help you attain all that you desire. This goes back to the moon reading that I did a few videos ago. You know, if you're still watching, go back to the moon reading that I did where I talked about working with each other to help manifest and bring into fruition what it is that we desire. Oh, personal celebration. Oh, look at the baby. Oh, and the fairies are dancing beneath him. You are an amazing being who has done incredible things in your life. Revel in who you are and what you have accomplished. Share these achievements with those around you. Your friends will be there to cheer for you. Okay, so I'm going to get a second copy of this deck. Distraction. So this is the baby. Put this book down. That's on the back of the card. See that there? Let's see. <laughs> Distraction as the train goes by. While the small fairy turned his back on the baby, a group of pixies have lifted the child up and away out of harm's reach. What caught the fairy's attention and will he be able to capture the baby again and bring him back with him? Distractions are a part of life. They remind us to be mindful of our actions and what we are doing. Follow your true path or you'll be carried away. Make sure you limit the interruptions going on around you. Find your focus to achieve your goals. Mm. Gossip. Be aware of those listening when you least expect it. If you are too focused on being the center of attention, you will miss something important right in front of you. Teachers. A girl bundled in a heavy coat looks up at the wooded creatures standing around her. They lean down as if they are giving her some meaningful wisdom. She appears to be talking or taking their teachings to heart. Teachers are all around us in the wind, in the trees, in the creatures skittering across the land. This card asks you to seek knowledge. Seek knowledge from unusual sources. Nature has much to offer. All you have to do is listen. Community celebration. Punishment. <laughs> Fairies pull on the hair, clothing, and hat of a young girl. She must have done something to deserve this unwanted attention. Perhaps this is the good folks way of teaching spiteful children a lesson. Be true to yourself or pay the price. Gift givers can always take the rewards back if you do not seem to appreciate them. If you've drawn this card, think about what got you into this sticky situation and how you can make amends to get yourself out of it. 
Oh, wow. Take flight. A coven of witches takes flight in the stormy weather. Wispy cats dart in and around their booms. The more seasoned witches navigate the turbulent winds with caution, while the younger witches take delight in the adventure. <laughs> One witch does not seem to be as sure-footed as his friends because he holds onto his broom with trepidation. Be your own navigator through the rough times. Trust the path you set out on. You know you can get past the storm. Let this card guide you through the hardships you endure. And the last card, rejoice. This card is a wonderful omen to receive. Rejoice and celebrate with your tribe. You have worked hard and done so much. Know that bad times will pass and the good will return. You are in the moment. Let the wild rumpus happen. Wow, this, I have to say I'm impressed. I am thoroughly impressed with this Oracle deck. It's lighthearted and poignant and it uh, delivers the messages you know of course the car stock is great if those things matter to you yes they do matter to many of us Los Garabeo um, all the other decks that I just reviewed I review them and they'll probably sit up on the shelf for a bit but this deck yeah I'm gonna have to get a second copy of this one this is going to get quite a bit of use. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Let's see. It's a small oracle deck. Let's see what message we have here. Okay. Do I do this a la Kelly and pull three cards? You know how Kelly is. Kelly doesn't pull one oracle card for a message. That's right, Kelly. I hope you're listening because this deck has your name all over it. This is a perfect deck for embracing the magical. You guys get this deck. This is the deck for embracing the magical. Okay, so I'm going to pull. Let's see. The Collector. I remember that one. Okay. Let's see. Um, well, this is the Owl watching out. I don't remember exactly which one that is. The name of that but I shall look it up and and oh rejoice celebration so let's see if I can do this for 23 car 23 tiny puka peeks out from the leaves of a tulip Something shiny has caught his eye. He wears shiny baubles around his neck and has a long feather tucked in his magnificent hairdo. A heavy cloth bears the weight of the pouch at the side of his hip. He wears only one shoe. Is this because he's only collected one shoe? The collector knows what he wants to own. If he has come to you, be on the lookout for your next edition. Choose wisely. Make sure this is something you desire. And above all, don't lose your shoe. Yeah, you know. <laughs> okay, and card number 27. We have talked about we're being supported here. So let's be discerning in what it is that we want to obtain or acquire or bring into our lives, right? And know that we are supported in making right decisions, being discerning, what it is that we want to bring to our lives, what it is we want to, I don't know, own, take ownership or be part of. Um, but again, you know, this does talk about your inner voice is calling. Stay on your path. Don't get distracted by the shiny baubles, okay? That's why you need to be discerning or else you'll end up with one shoe. You're supported. You're not taking this path by yourself. And on this path, there'll be, I feel, moments to celebrate and honor yourself. Um, gosh, I'm really loving this deck. 
you know, they'll be there. There'll be people there to celebrate. As I'm looking at this deck, and there is a bunch of children running around in front of me. I do not like the bugs. But anyway, thank you so much for coming by. Yes, this deck, man, this deck gets a thumbs up from me. I love it. I adore it. I adore it. I adore it. Okay. One last thing before I go. I have to figure out how I'm going to do a walkthrough of the John Bauer deck. This is another deck. This is a Tarot deck now that I was thinking about using for Embrace the Magical. Um, I have been in love with John Bauer's artwork for a long time. And of course, oh, I treated myself to a big book of uh, fairy tales because of folk tales because this is what I like. Yes, I do have it in paperback so I can walk around with it, but I think this is what I'm going to be delving into for Embrace the Magical. Anyway, I'll come back with that. Thank you so much for coming by. Stay blessed. Have a great weekend. Bye.